Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. That is a quote by Nelson Mandela. Welcome to Trina Talk. Trina Talk is a weekly podcast that will inspire and empower women of all ages to strive for the impossible. Your host, Trina L. Martin from TrinaMartin.com is a motivational speaker, leader, and cyber tech expert. Every week, Trina will share wisdom gained from her life experiences and lessons learned while pursuing her goals to inspire you to achieve the next level in your life. Now, your host, Trina L. Martin. Hello, welcome to Trina Talk. I am your host, Trina L. Martin, and this is episode 80. Before I get into this week's episode, please don't forget to join me this Friday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time for my Facebook live show, Talk to Trina. It is where I talk about the trip tips, trends, experiences, and I have a discussion with you about leadership and leadership development. So if you are a current leader, emerging leader, or just someone who wants to learn how to deal with their leadership, the show is for you. So don't forget to tune in. Don't forget to leave your comments and send me your questions. So this week's episode topic is tools to build your health. My guest this week is Suzanne Carpenter. Suzanne is a certified nutritional consultant the CEO and founder of Carpenter 180. Through her successful 10-year nutrition career, Suzanne saw a gap in the industry and a trend in society. Americans are confused and overwhelmed more than ever when it comes to actually losing weight and keeping it off. She created a virtual nutrition education company called Carpenter 180, whose mission is to provide affordable, and simple programs that can clear up food confusion so that people can win at losing weight. Hi, Suzanne. Welcome to Trina Talk. Hi, Trina. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be on with you. I am excited to talk to you. I mean, you have an interesting journey, and I think it's going to be inspiring for the listeners to um, learn about you. So give me the background on who you are and how you came to be the person that you are today. Okay, sure. So I am 46 years old and I always say I'm six foot two, which means I have a different perspective on everything. Um, I have four kids. I have a 20 year old and I cannot believe that an 18 year old and then twins that are 13. So we go boy, girl, boy, girl. And I married my college sweetheart. I met him one month into my freshman year at Michigan state. And we've been since. Um, And then the way that I got here, I'll tell you what, I started out teaching first grade. And I always say that I have this ability that once I understand complex science, I can explain something in a way that a first grader can get it. It's like my little superpower. So I'm teaching, I get pregnant, I decide I want I want to be a stay at home mom. So I came home and I raised the littles and my husband built the corporate career. And the thing is, he's our favorite. So when he gets home, we're all fishing to get up to him. But he was always on an airplane or traveling. So he missed a lot of the kids' years. So what ends up happening in 2009, that's when the auto industry tanked. And we were living in Michigan at the time. And he is a vice president for Caterpillar. And I ended up in the hospital with a full bowel. And I spent almost a month in there recovering. And my GI gave me a prescription saying I had this every day for my abdominal health. That's important for later. My husband comes in and he says, I'm forecasting it's January. They're not going to need me in about three years because of the auto industry. We need to go find something else. And now this was what we thought was his forever job. So we really relocated our family from Michigan, Milford, Michigan, down to Jackson, Mississippi. We needed to get out of the snow, but we were going for a quality of life because Dave was going to be home at nighttime. And that's what we really, really wanted. But there was this little part, this little thing called the 40% pay cut. And we are possibly the nicest people you will ever meet in your life. And we just wanted to sweep that little thing under the rug and make it go away and not talk about it. But Dave was thinking, 
man, you just cut out savings for four weddings and four colleges and four retirements. And I was thinking, oh, we just cut out smoking hot dates and trips and these people need a lot of shoes and I'm going to have to budget grapes. I mean, there was just a lot going on. So I jumped into the wellness sphere as a way that I could fit people to products and I could stay home and I could build a business. And while I was doing that, I started coaching people food because people would buy products, supplements, whatever. And it's always like I had this sense that they wanted a magic diet pill to help them lose weight or feel better. And I had this knowing of, yeah, but um, we've got to take care of the kitchen part. You can't eat biscuits and gravy and then expect to have abundant health and weight loss as well. We're going to have to really address the kitchen. So I had this hobby over here of working with people that I just loved. And this is what this is what I'm, I've grown that I've become so excited about is really helping to clear up food confusion for people so they can win at losing weight. But the reason this ever happened, and this is the part of the story that got me here, I just kind of need to fill you in on the back part. The reason it happened is I was, I was sitting in front of some doctors and dietitians just learning because I'm a nerd. And I say that with love to anybody else who's a nerd, (laughs) just love learning. And somebody asked me this question and said, you know, you said you would die for your kids, but would you change for them? And that, that pierced me and it kept me awake at night. And this is why I actually developed in high school an eating disorder. And I started out just as um, exercise bulimic and I would over exercise to outrun my fork. It didn't work. Um, but that was what began in high school. It's because I'm 6'2". I think I was looking for a way to be smaller, you know, looking for a way to fit in because of my, my height. So here begins this eating disorder. And the reason I bring up the bowel obstruction is that my GI said I had to exercise every day for my abdominal health. He actually gave an addict a prescription. And I loved that. And so I would starve myself until I would binge like crazy and then I would over-exercise. I would skip things so that I could make sure I got to exercise. I would go on family vacations and wake up at 4.30 and 5 in the morning to exercise. It was out of a fear place. So I was using laxatives. Things were kind of like starting to fall apart. And then I asked this question. And this is the tipping point question because what I realized is I have two girls and I have two boys. But if I don't get me right, then my girls are very likely to go down the same spiral because I was the ugliest voice in my head looking in the mirror. And that's what brought on the disordered eating. I knew my girls were destined to repeat this and I couldn't stand that idea. So I got help. And the thing that happened is some of the missing nutrition gaps got filled in for me in understanding food. And this was going to be my greatest shame, Trina. This was the thing I was going to take to the grave. I was never going to tell my husband about this. I was, I was never going to tell anybody about this. And then it was out of realizing that I was able to feel better and find food peace, that I wanted that for my girls. And then I realized, actually, I have like a mission in the world to pay that forward because I came to realize there's so many other women suffering with maybe not quite as an extreme of an eating disorder, but a disordered eating all the same. And that's what's landed me to this space, to being on this podcast, to meet you, Trina, to share this today. Wow. So let's go back. So you were doing all of this. You were exercising and avoiding eating. Your husband didn't have any clue what was going on? <clears throat> no, I was really, <clears throat> I don't even know that I knew there was something wrong in the beginning. <clears throat> Probably I did because I was, a, I was, I felt shame about it, but I didn't know what to do different. So I, I didn't also identify it as a, a problem until mm-hmm. much later. Uh, so no, he didn't see it. We would go out to eat. Now remember, I was also binging. So he would see me have a great big food party. And then maybe he wouldn't notice because he was traveling that during the week I was hardly eating anything, you know, an apple here, some broccoli slaw for dinner, just enough to keep me going. And so it was, it was easy to make it look like it was normal. Now, what I like about what you said, because, you know, here at Trina Talk, we're about inspiring others, is the fact that you said you had to get yourself together because you didn't want your daughters to repeat the cycle. Mm -hmm. Tell me, 
how did you get to that realization? Because a lot of times people don't get to that place where they go, okay, I need to pull it all together and get myself together so that I can be better and I can show my family better. What made you just decide to, you know what, let me wake up and do better? That's a really good question. Okay, so I I kind of have this thought of um, women are the nutritional gatekeepers for the family. I'm mostly, I mean, I'm generalizing my husband grocery shops, but mostly women are pulling in the food and they're making the meals, mostly. So I knew that I was a mentor to these girls and I knew that they were watching me more than they were listening to whatever I had to say. And I was keenly aware of how ugly I talked to the girl in the mirror. I was very aware of the just every morning that starting out as an underdog thoughts when I'm brushing my teeth the, and the underdog or the um, low self-confidence by what I was looking at in the mirror. And the thing is, I know life or death and the power of the tongue. I could never imagine, I had this, this moment, and this might be exactly what you're asking me. What if they could hear out loud what I was saying to myself? I would never want them to ever hear that. And then I thought, you know, if somebody was speaking to me that way, I would never let my girls hear that, nor would I let somebody speak to me that way. So there was, there was like the beginning nudges. I remember walking on that path. And then, then I couldn't stand the idea of somebody speaking to them that way. Like when I was asked the question, would you change for them? I was thinking about their worth and how I would never let somebody speak to them that way. Therefore, I wouldn't want them to speak to themselves that way. I, I mean, I really, I'm, I know the way that the girls and I would talk in high school in the mirror or in the sorority house and the, oh, I feel and oh, you know, and you're cutting yourself down. I couldn't stand the idea that my little girls would do that. And that was what had to change. Mm. That's what really, really solidified that I, I knew that I had to, I couldn't fool them. They're mm-hmm. smart. You know, kids pick up on everything. Oh, yeah. So I knew I had to get this thing right. It had to be authentic. Wow. That's amazing. Now, did your mother have any issues like this? Where do you think you, this came from besides just the low self-esteem? Right. Okay. So no, I don't think my mom had any okay. issues like this. In fact, my mom didn't know about this until just a few years ago. And she was, boy, you know, like what a hard thing for a mom to probably yeah. read because she did want to take it on as her fault. Yeah. I don't, I don't believe that it was. The thing is, I think some of the things that happen when you're little, those little, little things are bigger than we think. I, I really tried working on this years ago about what, what is my oldest memory that would have triggered a disordered eating, a disordered relationship with food. I remember being on the school bus in a pair of shorts and I, I had to be middle school or maybe a little less. And I was sitting on the school bus and the popular boy walked past me and he stopped and he said, your thighs are really big. And, um, and my thighs were laying on the, they were squished Mm -hmm. on the bus seat Mm -hmm. and he just kept on walking. I think the fact that I can remember that as an adult, I think that was a really big beginning into, I need to do something different so that I can fit in. Mm -hmm. So taking your life journey. What are you doing now with your um, new self? With my new self, like if business wise or personally? Um, both. Let's, let's talk about the business because you've, you've taken your experience in life and you've created a business, correct? That's right. Yes. So, okay. So let's talk about that. I'm really excited about that. So um This is where I was able to take my business degree and my teaching degree and then compile it with my consulting (laughs) certifications for nutrition. And I created it something called SOS, Sue's on your shoulder. So my name is Suzanne. So your daily SOS, your Sue's on your shoulder. So here's what I know. When we're learning, uh, a lot of times we're learning for the test, like about studying for the ACT or the SAT, or you're studying for a college exam, you are putting as much information as you possibly can into your head for that moment, for that test. And pretty much the minute you walk out of that test and go crank your car, you forgot about 80% of it, and you're not really going to apply it into life. 
Okay. People are doing the same thing with nutrition and diets and weight loss. And that's what I saw a trend in uh, with people. So what I realized is I've got to tap into how do people learn? How do we create habits? How do we create something that is actually um, applicable to life? So Sue's on your shoulder, SOS is a bite size, a nutrition course broken down into bite sized nuggets. So they're daily sound bites that are two or three minutes long that are sequential so that every day you get a different sound bite dropped onto your phone in a text message. So it's right there for you every day. And it's teaching in the beginning what's a protein, what's a fat, what's a fiber, but it's actually teaching how do I find fiber? What amount of fiber? What's a net carb? How do I keep my net carbs low? Why do I want to keep my net carbs low? How do I burn fat for fuel? Um, where does exercise fit in and all of this? What do I do when I'm hungry? How do I journal? Like all those things that are nutrition. I could go on and on for eight hours. And the only thing somebody would remember is the one thing that tugged on their heart because we have such busy lives and our bandwidth is so full. So the SOS is meant to come daily. It's meant to create a habit. It's meant to create a pattern, but it takes about 66 days to create a new habit. It takes mm -hmm. practice. It takes effort. It takes showing up. So instead of giving somebody a really big piece of information all at once, it's going to kind of just wash away. Mm -hmm. I reverse engineered this so that we've got slow and steady wins the race because nutrition's really not hard when we pull it down to the basics. It just, it's such a crowded space. There's so much information. Who is your trusted truth teller? Who do we listen to? There's so many fads. But really, if we get this thing down to, it's calories in, calories out, and it's protein, fat, and fiber are your major nutrients, and we get to just that basic understanding that's not taught to most grownups, mm -hmm. we can really move forward from that. Wow. And that is, that's so basic. Like you said, you know how to break it down like a first grader. And I think we're all looking for that, right? We're all looking for um, how to stay in shape, how to eat healthy. Um, and it's funny because I just came from Italy a couple of weeks ago and no one eats like we eat here in America. You know, we supersize everything. You go to a restaurant at I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've gone to dinner and I've taken half of my meal and I've gotten another meal off of it. Mm -hmm. And in Italy, it's funny because, you know, they bring reasonable portions. It was nothing that was, you know, huge, but it was flavorful, it was great. Everything was fresh and I was full. Even with having dessert, nothing was heavy. Everything was so light and so, you know, just you could just taste the freshness. And I'm thinking, you know what, if I had had the same thing in America, I would feel like I had just gained 10 pounds. Mm -hmm. That's you know? right. So it's, it's funny how, I don't know, I don't know what it is as far as our food and how we prepare it. But since you're in the space and you're, you know, you're doing nutrition and things like that, what are some ways that we can avoid um, feeling like that? And, you know, and aside from eating a salad, you know, 24 hours a day, what do you suggest? Right. That's a great question. Okay. So, you know, if we can get into at every meal, having protein, fat, and fiber on your plate, those are three things that people can identify. Most people know what a protein is, mm -hmm. you know, even vegan, they know their sources, get that on your plate, find fiber, that's your whole grains, legumes, fruits, and vegetables, fill that plate full of those things. And you do want a little bit of fat as well. Now I'm speaking to people who are not in ketosis. I know right now keto is a big buzz phrase, but if there's many more who are not in ketosis. So for those people, we want fat, but in moderation. Now, if you have protein, fat, and fiber on your plate and you look at it, basically, I just did a whole lot of science for you by helping you build that nutrient-dense plate with those three things. Because what's happening, each one of those, a protein, a fat, and a fiber, they each have this really special job in our bodies of turning off hungry hormones of shutting down things that are going to make you crave food and make you feel hungry, make you feel deprived. If you have all of those three nutrients on your plate, because fiber is a zero calorie part of a carb. So you're having the carbohydrate. You're just having the part of the carbohydrate that's going to rev your metabolism and make you burn more calories. But if we can turn off those hungry hormones, we're balancing blood sugar. 
And then that means we're not going on the roller coaster ride of spike and drop, which feels really yucky. And when you drop your blood sugar really fast after a big carb meal, you're, you still have all that blood sugar in your body. It's still hanging out in there, but the drop made you feel like you needed to go get more. Maybe you're not really so hungry, but it's your body's way of saying, man, we've got to come back up because we feel so bad. Go get more food when really you don't need it. Mm -hmm. So if you're having a balanced meal of protein, fat, and fiber, and you begin to feel that good, calm energy, you'll start to crave more of that. Because a lot of Americans are going to bed on Ben and Jerry's, and I did it. You know, or they're going to bed on their biggest meal is coming after seven o'clock at night. Like I promise you, Trina, when my kids were little, before I understood when I was in my heyday, I would starve all day and then binge on ice cream at night. And then I would feel terrible and I would wake up with what I call a food hangover. Mm -hmm. You know, just that terrible sugar the next day. Mm -hmm. Well, when you can get yourself, your body to, when you can trust yourself enough to do protein, fat, and fiber, And when you can trust yourself enough to fuel yourself with food during the day, you're not going to be as hungry at nighttime after dinner. And when you can have a couple nights in a row when you go to bed, having not had a late night heavy snack and you wake up feeling good, that's going to help you want to do more of that. Another really practical thing, have a snack between four and six o'clock every day. Ruin your dinner, offset your dinner. Between four and six, if you can have I always talk about these things called GG crackers. You can get them off Amazon. They're the letter GG. They're four grams of fiber each cracker, only two net carbs, 20 calories. You are going to burn more calories because you put these in your mouth than had you left them out because your body's going to be working hard to break down this fiber that it won't. So you eat four GG crackers, say with some uh, Greek whipped cream cheese and turkey. Let's say you have that protein, fat, and fiber, mm-hmm. and a big glass of water. Your, your stomach's going to stretch. Mm-hmm. It's going to signal to your brain you're full. You're going to go into dinner having ruined your dinner, and you're much more likely to make good choices for dinner and then be done. Because a lot of us are eating most of our calories at the end of the night. Yeah. And that's when your metabolism is at its lowest. That's when our willpower is at its lowest. You don't need energy at nighttime. You need energy during the day. So what I basically said to pull this back down is each meal, just look for protein, fat, and fiber. Mm. And then in the afternoon between four and six, have a bridge snack, ruin your dinner, protein, fat, and fiber again. See if you can just lock into doing those things in the beginning, and that's going to help balance blood sugar and you'll feel better. Your tip, mm-hmm. by the way, of only eating half the meal in the restaurant is perfect because we're being overserved uh, protein in the meals. Like average is about 10 ounces and women need maybe three to four. So you could mm-hmm. take a meal size and definitely two meals, if not three out of that. Yes. And that's what I recognize for myself because I was like, I can't eat all of this food in one sitting. So I take it home and yeah, I have a meal for the next day, either lunch or whatever. Um, your GG crackers, what do they taste like? Well, let's just say they're um, sort of just the vessel to get the food to your mouth. They're mm-hmm. dry. Okay. I would definitely say let's keep, <laughs> let's keep the water close by because I'm experienced with them and I still get like, Ugh. but in terms of, I, there's just really nothing better on the market than these in terms of high fiber, low net carb, but they're dry, they're bland. Think about a really bland bran muffin. They're just, they're kind of like a, yeah, I don't want to oversell them in their like culinary excellence, but (laughs) they are incredible in terms of providing dietary fiber to your body. And that's what Mm -hmm. a lot of people have a hard time finding. Another great trick, by the way, with GG crackers is top them with some marinara and maybe some Greek um, string, low fat string cheese and microwave them for 10 seconds and make little pizzas. They'll soften up a little bit that way. Oh, okay. Wow. That's interesting. Yeah, it's so funny. Just it's, and it seems like it's hard to get a nutritious meal unless you're at home and you're making your own meal every day. And and you and I both know some days you just don't feel like cooking. You want right. to you know go out to eat. You know, have your date with your your husband or just go out with your kids. And so at that time you're going, well, do I feel like a salad or do I want something else? How do you work with your clients on how to make those decisions when they're not at home preparing their own meals? 
Okay. So let's assume that they're, they're wanting weight loss. So that would be where I'm coming from with this. I, I say start with a broth-based soup or a salad to offset your hunger. Get a dinner salad, put the dressing on the side, leave off, put the cheese on the side, at least control it, mm-hmm. leave off the croutons. Okay. That's where we start. And then it, it does require, let me interject here real quick. Do this whole deal. People have been successful in other areas of their life. They can successful in weight loss. Success leaves clues. So if there's any other place in your life where you've gotten an A, that means you can also win here. You just need more information, but you also are going to have to exercise discipline and compromise. In every other place of life, it's admirable and encouraged and needed to exercise discipline and a lot of compromise. Your relationships, your job, building your career, those things are required skill sets. Well, in weight loss, that's the truth too. You're going to have to just make some compromises and you are going to have to exercise discipline. But if we can actually just make it black and white of like, well, I had to do it with my exercise or I had to do it with my work, with my work I'm going to have to do that here. If we can set that table first, that helps all of this seem a little bit more doable mm-hmm. because you have to remove triggers. So if the bread basket's a trigger, it's going to be have the bridge snack before you're going to the restaurant so you aren't going to eat your arm off. <laughs> and then you might be more likely to go, okay, we're going to just keep the bread off the table. Yeah. Or we're going to have to keep the chips and salsa off the table or, or be- order side up vegetables. So we get to the restaurant, we've gotten rid of the triggers, which is usually the bread basket, order a broth-based soup or a salad. Then when it comes to what are we going to order on the menu, look for some type of lean protein. This is getting a lot easier than it was 10 years ago. I mean, it, you're not hard pressed to find a piece of fish or salmon or lean protein right. on any meal. Then just at the restaurant, leave off the pasta, leave off the quinoa. There's healthy foods and then there's healthy foods for weight loss. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it has to do with just too much elevated portion size. So I'm like, just double up the side vegetables. You know, if, if we're not going to, if we're not going into the meal because it's a birthday, your birthday, if it's not a special place that you're only going once a year, if it's kind of like, I just want to go out to dinner with the kids but you're wanting weight loss, I would argue that's a time to kind of stay on plan. Broth based okay. soup, salad, order your lean protein and a double side of vegetables and enjoy not doing dishes. Enjoy mm-hmm. having somebody bring you a meal. Mm-hmm. If you're going to fast food, I'm a, I'm a fan again of like, say we call Chick-fil-A God's chicken, you know, <laughs> <laughs> order, order a big salad and get a chicken sandwich and put the chicken on top and ditch the bun. You know, yeah. that kind of yeah. real smart stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I love Chick Fil A. <laughs> I, I do. I think they are from God. <laughs> I, I love them, and I do, and I try not to eat them too much because I do find that I expand if I do. <laughs> but <laughs> but if I have to do fast food, I think they're the lesser of the evil out there. Mm, they do a nice job. Yeah, they do a nice job. So. Um, Tell me what kind of things, the consulting and the things that you do in your business. Tell me a little bit more about that. Sure. Okay. So SOS that I was telling you about, the Daily Sound Bites, that's a monthly subscription. And by the way, your listeners can go to my website and um, I'm offering them seven free days of SOS to see if it's a fit for them. Just go to carpenter180.com, look up at the top, it says start your seven free day trial. And they just see if it's a fit and they, you know, get the messages dropped to their phone. That's one part. The other part is just video courses. Like let's say somebody says, oh man, I want to know more faster. And I have month long courses coming out that cover different nutrition topics. You know, the first one is just the basics of Mm -hmm. here's, here's kind of everything you know to just get your feet wet. The introductory course to like math for college would be the (laughs) example. And then the third part to it is, I call it babysit my plate. And that's the one-to-one consulting. And that's the person that wants me to actually help them come up with a grocery list. And, oh, you know, like, what are different fibers and proteins and fats I can have for each meal? Help me brainstorm what I should put on my plate. Or they have questions and they want the accountability and they want just that person that's really going to champion it with them. So Mm -hmm. the great thing is I can meet people in three different places. Some want just a bite. Some want to know more, but they're, I don't really want to work with somebody. I'm feeling intimidated. This is, this is a little bit vulnerable of a subject for me. I want her information, but I, 
you know, I'm not ready to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. Others just want the conversation. So I built it so that I can accommodate people in different ways. Wow. Nice. Yeah. It's funny. So you, are you a dietitian at all or anything like that? I'm a, I, okay, so I'm a certified nutritional consultant. Okay. So it's a step down from there, but okay. I absolutely can advise people. You know, and it's not where I'm writing meal plans and I'm not, um, how do I want to say this, healing. Like a dietitian is going to actually cure, work with a diet to cure blood pressure or diabetes. Not, not cure, but, you know, certainly to help. Right. So mine is more, we're going to be identifying the foods that are in line with what's going to just support them in burning fat for fuel and keeping their net carbs lower. That's, that's a lot of where the masses need the information. Mm-hmm. You know, that's a lot of what a lot of people need because you go in the grocery store and it's just, overwhelming. You might even think I've got something here that's high fiber and this is going to be perfect, but then come to find out they're bamboozled on the label because they didn't know quite everything. So I can come in and just fill in some of those gray areas that still get people in trouble. And it's not because people aren't smart. It's that the, um, the food manufacturers are so smart. Yes, they are. Now, how does one find you? Like if I were a person who needed your services, where would I look? I mean, how would I even start? Because until today, I never knew you existed. Existed. You know, that's the funny thing about this internet is we all want to be found and we're all looking for somebody and it's like we just keep missing one another. Mm -hmm. So everything for me is at Carpenter 180. So it's Carpenter O N E eight zero. So you spell the number one. And the reason I named it that is Carpenters build things. And that's my last name. And then 180 is a direction. You want to make a 180 degree turn in your lifestyle, but you have to make one intentional decision for 80 days in a row so that we can begin to make a habit that's going to last a life, make that 180 degree circle. Wow. That's that's amazing. That's and that, and I figured that when I saw the one eighty, I was like, yeah, she's talking about a, a turn there. So mm-hmm. that's um that's actually very interesting. Um, so what does your family think about what you do? They're excited about it. You know, I I I'm really I'll tell you, Trina, I'm really proud that my kids saw me come up with a dream. And they heard me talking about this for years. I've had had it in my head for as long as I can remember. And then for them to see me grind out through Google Docs, and I felt like I was pulling an elephant out of my nose, all the things that were in my head that I knew, to pull it all out and to make it make sense, and then to pretty it up so that it can Mm -hmm. be delivered to people. And they know that I'm not a technology person, so they saw me face things that scared me, that that could have kept me from moving forward, but I kept getting these obstacles and having to go around them and go around them. And so they saw me with grit and work grow something that was never there. And I, I just, I, they're right now, they're just so proud. They're just so proud, but I'm hoping as they become adults, they feel empowered. Like my mom's 46 years old and that's when she was building Carpenter 180. You know, like they're never going to think they're too old to start. They're never going to think it's not their time. I'm hoping they'll always be looking for ways that they know that the reason I built Carpenter 180 is my love language to the world. They know that it was my way of trying to like bridge a gap for people. Like I needed somebody to rescue me. And there's that phrase that um, John Maxwell says of, you know, decide what it is you need most in life and go do that. And that's what I, that's what I did. And so I, the idea I feel of like I'm pulling people across a bridge, like, come on, you can come over here too. You can have food peace too. It's not just for a few people. We just didn't teach you enough when you were little. So let's learn it now. And then you'll have the rest of your life. Because I can't stand the idea that on a day somebody dies, that they are struggling with body image or thinking they were still on a diet. Or when they pack to go on vacation, they pack what fits, not what they want to wear. Or worse yet, They don't have family pictures made because they don't like how they look or they stand in the back or they put them off. Like those types of things, they, they tear me up a little bit. And so the idea that maybe Carpenter 180 can come alongside some other people and help them in their journey and they go do their life bigger and better because that 
insecurity or that underdog feeling is no longer with them in the morning, just like it's not with me anymore. And they go do their life. They go change something in their community. They love bigger. They feel happier. I mean, the idea that I get to be a part of that is really what keeps me going and what, what makes me work hard. And that's what they see. Mm, I love that. Now with the people you've worked with, have you helped someone else that may have been where you were? In different ways. Um, in different ways. It's interesting. Um, I find that I haven't come across, ironically, as much as an eating disorder. I come across a lot more people who are 35 to 40. Maybe they just, their kids are just in the elementary school. That woman seems to come to me the most because I think that's when I started my journey. So I probably, that's what I'm attracting. And they want to feel pretty again. They, they want to get back into their genes. They want to have energy again. They feel like I'm, I'm frumpy. I just, I just want to feel good about myself. Mm -hmm. And so, um, that's the person that I work with the most. Mm. Do you get any males that come to you? I do. I do. Wow. Not as many, not mm -hmm. as many, but I do. I do definitely get the men. And it's really funny because, you know, they're just, when they come to me and they want to work, they are just as wounded yeah. and they have very similar emotions, very similar feelings. Wow. And, but now here's the thing. Men are interesting because they don't seem to have as many excuses. And I don't mean that as a negative to anybody that just heard me say that word and went, oh, it's just that we, we have these obstacles or these things to overcome. And men seem to have that warrior-ness to them, like obstacles are meant to be broken. And they just push through them in a different way. And they have, they have sometimes a little bit different resolve. Mm. It's interesting to work with it both. Wow. That's interesting. Well, Suze, we're going to get into the questions. Okay. You ready? I think so. Okay. Who or what motivates you? Okay. What motivates me is when somebody has a success, because when somebody has an ex a success, it's empowering and it's a way of like, oh, then I could do that too. Great. What demotivates you? Hmm. Okay. So it's developing the thick skin when somebody's having a hard time or they don't like something or they voice their opinion. That can be something that sets me back a little bit. Hmm. Okay. When was a time that something was said or done to hurt you, but it worked for your good? Well, I don't you bet it was that little boy on the bus. It definitely hurt me. But in the long run, here we are. <laughs> you know, I mean, what if he never said that and I never addressed these issues or I never had them, but my girls did? Wow. You know? Something to think about. What is your fear? Oh, failure. Oh my gosh. Uh, Trina, we didn't even really talk about fear that much, but I can honestly say as exhilarated and excited as I am about life, I'm equally feel vulnerable to, you know, what if the, what if this business doesn't make it the long haul or, you know, now that I love so deeply this family and these humans that we've grown, the fear of what if that, that fear of failure, I mean, that, that, that's something to work around. That's one that I like, I don't know if you know the book by John Grisham, um, but, or um, John Maxwell, but he has uh, failing forward, something about failing. I'm going to botch it up now. Anyway, he has a great book about failure. So if somebody were to Google him, mm -hmm. they'd find it. But he basically says you need to train for failure because it's not that you're failing. It's just a situation and it's how you handle it and what you learn from it. And I definitely needed that in this season. Wow. Tell me a while to get to that answer. I'm sorry. Oh, no. Is there a time when you wish you had done something that you didn't? Oh. Is there a time when I wish I had done something that I didn't? You know, right now, in my life now, I wish that when I was in college, I might have gone down more of the RD path. Now, I wish that, but I didn't know that at the time. 
But I've thought that several times in the last few years. So when my kids are in college now, I'm starting to talk to them about, you know, like, really what skills are we getting coming out of school that's going to position you for success and being hireable moving forward? Right. Wow. Okay. Is there a time that you wish you had not done something? Oh, boy. You know, anybody that went and bought a house in 2009 and was in the real estate, that's a time where I wish we hadn't done that. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. What is your definition of success? Okay. My definition of success is being a happy grandmother. I hope that by the time my children decide to marry, that we love their spouses as our own. And that as grandparents, we are involved and wanted because to me, that's what we're doing is we're raising great adults. And I say that I am one of them. And I feel like the indication of having done a good job is that my children will want us around them and their children to do life together. That's powerful. How do you recharge? Okay, first, I love nothing more than going on a smoking hot date with my husband, Dave. Love that. That is my favorite for us to just, the two of us get out and just get really connected over a good dinner. Atlanta has some great restaurants. That's my favorite way to recharge. Uh, Other than that, I do need to start every single morning out just having really quiet time with myself and my journal and resetting my intentions and my goals and mantras and focusing myself every single day. Those are two very powerful things that I can do to keep my energy. Hmm. What are you awesome at? Well, I did tell you about my superpower that I can explain science. What am I awesome at? You know what? I think as much as I've talked, because you were so wonderful to have me as a guest on this podcast, and I thank you for this and honored, I think that I'm a good listener. Uh, In fact, I would probably prefer to flip the switch here and get to know everything about you. As you could probably tell when we started, before we started the interview, I want to know everything. (laughs) Well, you'll have to interview me one day. Yes, yes. What legacy do you want to leave? Oh, that's a good question. What legacy do I want to leave? Um, Again, the legacy is going to be my children, and it's going to be the values that are in them, that they know their worth, that they know that they were loved, and that they can go love greatly in their life, and that they feel confident and secure to go pursue whatever their passions and dreams are. I believe my legacy is in my four children and and what they do moving forward. Wow. Give the listeners one motivational takeaway. Okay. You're not, every day is a good day to start again. Every single day. So this life is not about being perfect. It's about doing things bad, perfect, and just failing forward. So whether it's weight loss, building a job, starting a career, starting a family, a relationship, building a house, whatever it is, this day matters and you're not too old to start. The other thing I would say is there's a space for you. There's a place for you. You have a voice. There's room. Someone wants to hear what only you can deliver, what only you can say. And it might be in order for you to say it or, or deliver it means you need to start today with whatever it is that one thing is that you're thinking about right now as I say that. Mm. Okay, Suze. Now you said it in, during our talk, but give, uh, tell the listeners how they can connect with you and the services that you offer. Oh, sure. Okay. So yeah, everybody can just go to Carpenter 180. So it's C-A-R-P-E-N-T-E-R-O-N-E-8-0 dot com. And they can get seven days of free SOS. Sue's on your shoulder. It's at Daily Soundbite. I also have emails that come alongside it, filling you in with all kinds of information and get into the Facebook group and you can watch some of my goofy lives and start just picking up all kinds of free content. That's a great place to start. If you're looking for a little bit more, you can look at the Food Peace University on the same website. Or if you want to work with me directly and you want to talk to me for a few minutes and see if I'm a fit, that would be Babysit My Plate. All that is at the website. 
My Facebook group is Carpenter 180, or my Facebook handle is Carpenter 180. So is my Instagram. I love Instagram because on my stories, I am forever just showing different parts of my day and what I'm filling my plate with. It's never the same part of the day, but that way people can see how I authentically eat 180 eating style. And those would be the best ways to get connected with me. Wow. Well, thank you for being with us and telling us about how we can live our lives better so that we can have balance with that protein, fiber, and fat um, so that we can be healthy. I really enjoyed the conversation. I did too. Thank you very much for having me on. It was my honor. Oh, thank you. Have a good day. You too. If you like Trina Talk, please don't forget to go out to Apple Podcasts to subscribe. Also, who else in your life do you know that needs some motivation and inspiration in their life? Don't forget to share Trina Talk with them. I hope you have a great week. And remember, if you change your mindset, you can change your life. Keep striving because success is a journey, not a destination. You can listen to Trina Talk anytime and anywhere. It's available on iTunes, Google Play Music, Stitcher, Spotify, and all other places that you can listen to podcasts. If you like the podcast, please don't forget to go to iTunes to subscribe, rate, review, and share. If you have questions for me or need inspiration on how to go to the next level, tweet me directly at Trina L. Martin.